Hi, and welcome to this add-on to the second tutorial. Um, I'm afraid I promised to mention a few things in the last tutorial and didn't get around to it, and meant to promise and get around to mentioning uh, another few concepts, um, and didn't get around to those either. So I'm going to review those in this, and hopefully there will be a greater um, understanding on your part of how it all works. Um, there's something else to mention as well that I didn't mention at the start of the last video, which I probably should have. In order to have a Max MSP patch or program, if you like the general term, uh, run on another machine, it doesn't have to have this fully licensed uh, edit mode of Max MSP. There is a freely available Max MSP runtime mode, which you can download onto any machine, and it will run your patches. So that's something to bear in mind if you want to take your program from the editing environment into a useful environment somewhere else. Uh, it will give you basically um, the equivalent of the locked mode so you'll be able to click on all the buttons and do all the th do all the things that you can in locked mode you just won't be able to unlock it okay so the things that I didn't mention before were that the flow of data the direction of data although it comes from the bottom of an object and goes to the top I, I've given the impression so far that it goes straight down well, I want to show you that if I pull this part of my diagram here, go to locked mode again, and then click, it still works because the data flow goes down here, and then down from the output of here to the input of here. So it doesn't matter that this line's at an angle, it will still go down that route. And it's a very important thing to consider because a lot of the time in your more complicated patches, you'll have data going back from the from the end to the, the start of the route that you're creating. So um, bear that in mind. Another thing that I didn't cover, which I explicitly said that I would in my last video, is the concept of... Um, sorry, just let me put the snap to grids up on here. Is the concept of um, what, what really a bang is and reading bangs from objects. Now, this button element can send out a bang message and a bang message will reach certain objects and when they receive a bang message what will happen is they will um, perform a specific task in this case output a number that's random between 0 and 5 so that's 6 values going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 um, as I mentioned in the last video but also this event of the number being outputted can be read as a bang and this is how that works. Using the button object again, which both reads events and displays them as a bang and can output bangs itself, if I attach it to the bottom of this random 6, when any event happens, if a number, for instance, is sent down here, then this will read it as a bang, which is an event that's happening. So there you go, you see it flashing. But it doesn't, when this number data comes along here, it stops when it reaches the button. And the button will only ever output it as a bang. So if I were to put a number box underneath here and connect it to the bottom of the button, and then lock it again, you'll see that although this value here changes, where the, where the root goes number, number data into an object, number data out of an object, into a number box. This one goes number data out of an object into a button which changes the data into a bang, bang data down here, and so this number doesn't get updated. But, as we saw over here, a bang message going into a number box will output the value of that number box. So, if I were to change this value here, for instance, and then connect another number box. Sorry, I've uh, done something daft there. <clears throat> Try that again. And then connect a number box to the bottom. You'll remember that until this number changes or a bang message is received, this one won't update. So, if I press up here, you'll see that this path goes like this. A bang comes down here, a number comes out of here in accordance to uh, 
how a random object reacts to a bang coming in, and then a button, uh, a button element will respond to the incoming number uh, by outputting a bang into a number box, and a bang into a number box will output the number data of that number box down its output and then eventually get received by a number box here that will update its output in line with with the um, received number data. So I think that pretty much clears up all the things uh, I meant to mention last time. If you have any queries or confusions just comment to me and I will either reply in comment form or if it's uh, something that I think I've been unclear about in a way that lots of people will misunderstand then I'll make a video or, or annotation amendment. Um, all feedback is welcome. Uh, just remember if you're an experienced uh, programmer or you're experienced in Max MSP, don't expect these videos to apply to you necessarily. This is for the complete beginner um, or those that, that are unclear about some of the fundamental principles of Max MSP. Um, so just so you know my target audience. Okay, I hope you have plenty of fun and there'll be some keep promising this, but in a few days' time there will be some more exciting material and we'll get on to more complex patching. I don't want to skip on any of the fundamentals because eventually that will be what enables you to do the creative things that people pick up Max MSP in order to do. So good luck and I hope I'll see you soon.